Welcome back, DP Review TV viewers. Chris Nichols here. I'm coming to you from the DP Review offices, and we have DP Review senior editor Barney Britton. Hello. Here. Thank Thanks, Barney, Chris. For joining us. And Barney, we've got some old cameras out here on the table, and the reason why. 2019, mm -hmm. and that's going to make it basically Deep Review's 20-year anniversary. That's right. Yeah, the fa the site was founded in uh, December 1998, so 2019 is our 20th year. As we go through this this year in our videos, we're going to kind of look back at some of these old cameras. But really, we're going to take out the two dinosaurs today, mm -hmm. aren't we? Yep. What are you shooting with today? Well, I've got the Nikon D1H here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've given you the Canon EOS 1D. Uh, you know, so I think we'll just go have a fun street shoot today, take some photos, and as things come to us and occur to us, we'll mention them and reminisce about how photography used to be. Mm -hmm. Go back to the early 2000s. I didn't, this didn't even occur to me, but this is an E lens. So it's not actually working at all. I can't control the aperture. Oh, and it's, it's just, just stopped down. down. Yeah, it's just staying stopped down. So you're saying you don't want to shoot where your camera says 2.8, but you're actually shooting at f16? No, I, you don't want to do that. I all don't day? think that's going to work very well. Sorry, uh, you know, after reviewing cameras for so long, you think I'd be better at this, but I still can't operate a 1D menu system while walking at the same time. <laughs> Hit select, hold it down, turn the dial, let go. I just want to turn my image review off. Hey buddy, so did you find a lens that's going to work? I did. I found literally the only lens at DP Review that will work on a camera this old, which is the Tamron 17-35mm uh, DI OSD. Can we avoid the tourist traps? Can yeah. you show me the like, you know, the secret angles that every city has that people just don't know about until they live here yeah. for a while? No, I can go. I think I can show you some places that people don't tend to associate with Seattle. Now, Barney, I mean, the, the D1H, it mm -hmm. really was sort of a... Still that, that feeling of an amalgamation of an old film camera and a digital camera slapped together. I mean, the LCD sticking way off the back. Very the much. This is the first generation of cameras where uh, Nikon and Canon were really doing it on their own. I mean, up to that point, they've been collaborating with Kodak, you know, but the 1D, you, you've got the 1D there, and the oh, D1, yeah. D1H, this is the first time that those companies were really trying to make their own product. Absolutely. Now, my camera, I mean, the, the viewfinder is fairly bright. It does feel quite small to me. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, we still have that great 45-point autofocusing yep. system. This has got what, the F100's focusing system? It's got the, the same air system as the F100 F5, so it's five points. You know, you used to pay a lot of money for, really for the sensor. Right. And then the companies would sort of economize around it. Supposedly the 1D, the original 1D, was actually meant to use a six megapixel full frame sensor. Uh, mm. The same one has ended up in the contacts. Ah, the most expensive, terrible digital camera. Ball right. Part. And yeah. was meant to end up in the in the Pentax full frame that never happened. Um, so been, supposedly, yeah. what happened is that Canon sort of pulled the emergency cable and um, mm. and switched sensors quite quite late in development of the 1D. And there you go, you end up with a four megapixel CCD. What does your camera shoot at? Because you have an APS-C size sensor. I in do. That. Yeah. Two point seven four megapixels. I think so. Um, <laughs> it's a perfect camera for shooting HD video. Uh, right. One yeah. frame, <laughs> one frame at a time. My battery's dead. Really? Already? So, no, this is not an uncomfortable grip. In fact, the grip is fantastic. This is me getting every single thorn bush on the way off that tree. But the two mediocre photos that I got out of that will be definitely worthwhile. Well, as soon as I use the off center air point, nothing is in focus. You have to use the center air point. Amazing how quickly we forget. So, I made the mistake this morning when I pulled these batteries out for your camera. These are actually the original batteries for the camera. Right. These are, I actually have another two which are newer third party brand. I didn't bring them. Okay, so these are the original nickel These are the original ones. From way back. And this one lasted how many pictures? I got about six. <laughs> You've got six pictures. Now I've got. <laughs> <laughs> and then it stopped. And yeah, it and then it stopped. Out. So one of the things that we had trouble with today actually was finding memory cards that were small enough <laughs> to work in these cameras. <laughs> um, this is a one gigabyte Lexar card. You're shooting, you're shooting 4K, right? Yep, 4K. Okay, so everything you just you just filmed me talking about the memory card, more space was just taken up on your card <laughs> than exists on this one. So you know how I said that this was the only lens that was going to work with this camera? Right. Well, I think I spoke too soon. Uh, it's not stopping down beyond 2.8. It's so you're saying that it is. You're shooting everything but wide it's open? Not. Everything's set wide open, yeah. <laughs> what I don't have, however, is anything properly exposed <laughs> since we left the office. I think I've stopped bleeding. That's good. See, I can shoot wide open, but on purpose.
Chris, are you still bleeding? I got a band-aid for you. I am still bleeding. How sterile do you think that is? Oh, extremely. What are you looking for, Barney? It's around here somewhere, a space needle. Despite all the frustrations with the interface and everything else, is they still look, I mean, the D5 still basically looks like this. That's true. Oh, I mean, even more so, the Canon yeah. EOS series. I mean, the 1DX looks exactly like they this. They really, really haven't changed. They introduced so many technologies that now we take for granted. Yes. Like FireWire 400. I mean, who doesn't use FireWire 400 Every now? day of my life. In 2000, 2001, that was a novelty. Now it's like FireWire this, FireWire that. Yep, my, exactly. whole, my whole house is FireWire. And <laughs> it was the... Now, look, I'm no expert, but isn't the Space Needle sort of an iconic Seattle tourist? Well, have you ever been there before? No, I guess not. Oh. I All mean, oh, right. Okay, okay. No, I mean, I just figured it's so tall everybody would see it and want to take a picture <laughs> of it, but maybe I'm wrong. One of the things I really miss about this era of photographs was the little doors. I always like the cameras, you just open a little door to get the functions, and you just pop it closed again. It's nice, like a little doll's house. Well, who's ever going to need white balance, right? You want to keep that <laughs> hidden from prying fingers. Of course, in my foolishness, I also thought, like, oh, I want to get this shot, but I need to get higher, so I'll just turn on the live view. <laughs> this is another one of those uh, exclusive photo opportunities. I, there's a lot of people around us, I mean. Again, Chris, I would ask, have you ever been here before? Um, no. In that case, no. stop complaining. Okay. Oh, I, mean, I love it. Ripped sound. straight out of an old film camera, hey? Eh? Yeah, yours is more like a bang, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, this hasn't really changed much in, in the years since we've been using it. I mean, that sounds very contemporary to me. So I did my first internship at a newspaper in about 2006, and they were still using D1Hs even then. They hated them because they were falling apart, the rubber was coming off, and they were horrible. You know, I remember talking to guys back at the time who was like, we still keep our film cameras. We, get, we take the digital picture for the paper, and then we take the film picture for, sure. for the archive because they knew that two and a half megapixels. Oh, that's for sure, the quality left a lot to be desired. Okay. Yeah. So Nikon had compressed RAW figured out way back when. How long did it take for the certain other manufacturers to, uh, to get around to that? Are you shooting at ISO 1600 now? No, I'm shooting at two stops over. <laughs> it's gonna look dreadful. It's amazing how much money you had to spend and still get a autofocus system back in those early days. It's always an interesting experience going back to these cameras, and in this case, almost 20 years, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And seeing how far we've come. The thing that I would notice today for myself, there was a lot of things I missed. Actually, Live View, surprisingly, mm -hmm. I missed on quite a few occasions. Yep. But all in all, the 1D, it really hasn't changed. I mean, I've said it so many times in camera reviews, when you pick up a Canon, it's very familiar, yeah. year to year to year. And and here again, so, I mean, the controls are so familiar and so similar. Yeah, and uh, you know, Nikon has come a long way, but the essentials are still are still the same. But really, you know, shooting with these cameras, if you shot with an EOS 1V, right. you'd hardly notice the difference. Hardly notice I mean, difference. this is an EOS 1V with a bad screen on the back. This right. is a Nikon F100 with a bad screen on the back. A very bad screen back. on the back. So coming from a film camera as a professional to coming to these, um, very smooth transition in many, many ways. Sure. Ironically, you just take a drop in resolution and your wide angles aren't quite as wide anymore because of the crop. I think it's testament though to how much Canon, Nikon and you know all the other manufacturers around at the time during that transitional period, how much they got right mm -hmm. that these cameras are still as usable as they are now. You know, we used to sell cameras back in the day when these were out. Yeah. But if you used to shoot with them, if you're a professional shooting with 1D and D1 series, let us know what it was like. For sure. Well, hopefully you enjoyed that little retrospective and uh, 
We're going to have more. I mean, this is just the first mm -hmm. of many, right? It's the 20th anniversary year, so, yeah. Yep. Let us know any comments below. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel. Check out Instagram and Twitter feeds. But uh, we'll have more of these coming up, so stay tuned. Lots more videos to come. Uh, we, it's time to look back. Yeah, I'll bring you some spare batteries next time. I'd really appreciate that. <laughs>